Ashdown Forest is within the high wheeled area of outstanding natural beauty. Its landscape has been changed and managed by man since Mesolithic hunter-gatherers first used the area for hunting over 8,000 years ago. A recent archaeological survey of the forest, in conjunction with the use of a new method of aerial survey called LIDAR, has revealed over 700 previously unrecorded archaeological sites. LIDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging, can penetrate through the tree canopies and undergrowth to identify archaeological features which are then confirmed by site visits. Archaeological evidence of early use of the forest comes from the Bronze Age, about 4,000 years ago, when burial mounds called barrows were built on some of the ridgetops. A number of enclosures dating to the late Iron Age and Roman periods and their associated field systems survive within the forest, showing that the landscape was both open and being farmed at this time. With the Romans came better communications. The London to Lewis Roman Road crosses the forest. And there was a huge growth in the iron industry, with numerous iron production sites exploiting the iron-rich seams of the area. Little is then known about the history of the forest until after the Norman invasion of 1066. The term forest does not mean a landscape covered with trees, but derives from the name for a royal hunting park with special powers to protect the deer within it. The historic area of the hunting forest was considerably larger than the area within the present Ashdown forest boundaries, which were mostly set after a large-scale sale of land at the end of the 17th century. Part of the historic forest was enclosed by a pale, a ditch and a bank with the ditch to the inside, with a wooden fence built on top of the bank to prevent the deer escaping. The pale was first referred to in records from the 13th century, and is still visible as a bank and ditch in a few places. Access through the pale was by gates or hatches, and some of these survive today in place names such as Chelwood Gate and Chuck Hatch. A number of hunting lodges were located in the forest, one of which may have been at King's Standing, where some of the earthworks remain and monarchs from Edward III to Henry VIII may have enjoyed hunting expeditions in the forest. Surprisingly, the forest has a lot of evidence for industrial activity. In the 17th century, a number of large iron production sites sprang up around the margins of the forest, with the ore being extracted from pits within the forest. The large ponds used to provide water to drive the bellows in the furnaces are still a major feature of the weald and landscape today. The iron industry needed large quantities of charcoal, for which coppiced woodlands were normally used, although these are largely lacking within the forest, suggesting it was still relatively open at this time. Other industries include the quarrying of stone and sand for building and making roads, and many of these quarries still exist across the forest. Clay was also quarried for some of the brickworks that existed around the edges of the forest. Another industry traditionally found within deer parks was the keeping of rabbits for food. These warrens usually took the form of long mounds of earth called pillow mounds, often enclosed within an area bounded with banks in which the rabbits were kept. Over 20 pillow mounds have now been found within Ashdown Forest, and many more exist within Hindleap and Broadstone warrens, which were formerly part of the forest before the 17th century sell-off of land. Other evidence of past activity are the numerous banks that cross the forest, some perhaps dividing it into different areas for deer and rabbits, or for growing coppice or other crops, whilst many old sunken tracks or hollow ways can be found, possibly used for droving animals from one area of grazing to another, and often converging on one of the many gates into the forest. From the end of the 18th century, there is a lot of evidence for Ashdown Forest being used for military training. In July 1793, a force of 7,000 militia under the command of the Duke of Richmond established a camp near Tunbridge Wells at Waterdown Forest, now known as Broadwater Forest. After a month, they moved on to Ashdown Forest and then subsequently to Brighton. They left behind lines of field kitchens, showing today as circular mounds. 
One damaged mound, recently excavated, showed that a ditch enclosed the mound and a number of small ovens were cut into the mound. In the later 19th century, the open areas of the forest were again used for training and firing ranges were built. Extensive use was made of the forest for training during the First World War, with troops practicing digging and using trench systems before going off on active service to the continent. The trench systems can be seen on this aerial photograph of 1929, when many of them were still open, and while most have now been filled in, some are still clearly visible. Firing ranges were also constructed, such as these near Old Lodge. In the Second World War, Ashdown Forest continued its training use. Crowborough Camp and West Camp housed many of the soldiers training on the forest. New firing ranges were built and previous ranges were reused and numerous slit trenches still litter parts of the forest. A broadcasting transmitter was established near King's Standing and was run by the Political Warfare Executive in conjunction with the BBC. Later in the war, two airstrips were constructed near Witch Cross by engineers rehearsing for the forthcoming campaign in northwest Europe. Military use of the forest continues today, with the army training area at Pippingford Park. Ashdown Forest has a long history and is rich in archaeological sites. Some of these can be seen by following the archaeological trails detailed in the leaflets that are available at the Ashdown Forest Centre. Here you will find a wealth of information to help you learn more about this unique Heathland landscape and how you can help us conserve it for future generations.